Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's pick a side for the Super Bowl. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, futures have been good to me this year, so I'm on both sides of the play. If you followed my videos from earlier playoff rounds, you also should have gotten George Kittle to win Super Bowl MVP at a plus 1600 and Travis Kelsey to win Super Bowl MVP at a plus 1600. Those were the odds being offered on those props right before Kansas City and San Francisco won their conference championship games. But, you know, gamblers never sleep. And let me just say this. Uh, one of these teams, at least from this seat, is better than the other. I believe the public has this one wrong. Right? Let me just say this. I don't believe Kansas City should be a one and a half point favorite. Quite frankly, I think the line's way off. I think the San Francisco 49ers should be favored in this game by at least three points. I know there are many points of view out there. I know some really reputable gambling shops are giving out tips that disagree with this opinion. Let me just make the case for San Francisco first. San Francisco, despite the public's infatuation with Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid, right? Mahomes is supposed to be the best quarterback in football, if you go by recent reports. And Andy Reid is supposed to be some offensive guru, right? Both are talented, but understand that this year, the San Francisco 49ers scored more points than the Kansas City Chiefs. Something's wrong with that offensive narrative. The 49ers, of course, were the higher playoff seed, right? Have we forgotten that the Ravens were actually the one seed in the AFC, right? The Niners were the one seed in the NFC. Understand, too, the Niners, and we'll talk about it, have a much better defense, a much better defense than the Chiefs. Let me also say that the Niners had a tougher schedule and they had the better regular season record. But what I want people to really focus on are the stats themselves. Understand, don't fall in love with public narratives, right? Don't fall in love with highlights. Dig a little bit deeper and look at the actual numbers. Now, let me say this. The San Francisco 49ers this year right defensively only gave up 4.7 yards per play right 4.7 yards per play now when you're talking about yards per play every one tenth of a yard matters right well let me just say that the Kansas City Chiefs this year gave up 5.4 yards per play. Folks, that's a whopping .7 margin. The Niners are much better. I mean much better defensively than the Kansas City Chiefs. Let me just say too that in terms of the yards they gave up in general, Defensively, the Niners rank second in the National Football League. The Kansas City Chiefs ranked 17th. Right? The Chiefs defensively are average to below average. 
the Niners defensively are elite. Let's also talk about passing. Right, The big advantage for the Chiefs is supposed to be Pat Mahomes, the reigning MVP. He's an excellent quarterback, folks. He's an excellent quarterback. Right, But what I want people to realize is that in terms of net yards per attempt, that's a passing stat. That'll tell you how good the passing offense is. Kansas City, 7.5 net yards per attempt. 7.5. That's very impressive. That's second in the National Football League. So given that Jimmy Garoppolo is practically being ignored, it's assumed that Pat Mahomes has a decided edge at quarterback. His passing prowess is supposed to exceed the 49ers. Would it surprise you to know that the Niners this year average 7.4 net yards per attempt? 7.4. So while the Chiefs were second in the National Football League in this category, the San Francisco 49ers were third. What this means is that you've just watched a very deceiving playoff game where the Niners are handing the ball off to people like Raheem Moser. Right there, handing the ball off so much, Jimmy Garoppolo hardly passes. Right? Maybe that game has misled the public into this line, this point spread. But understand, the Niners are proficient in passing the football. Jimmy Garoppolo is actually one of the better passers in the National Football League. Don't believe me, folks. Just look at the numbers from this year. Right, the Niners were handing the ball off because that was working. Because the Niners are one of the dominant rushing teams in the National Football League. They didn't run over Green Bay because they couldn't pass the football. Their net yards per attempt practically matches Kansas City, right? KC second, the Niners are third in the entire league, right? No, no, the Niners have the competitive pass game, but they're so good. And keep in mind, we've already established they hold opponents to 0.7 less yards per play than do Kansas City. They, they already have the vastly better defense. Well, just to understand the passing games are close. Right? The difference between 7.5 and 7.4 is negligible. Then when you look at the Russian games, folks, the superiority of the Niners becomes apparent. You know, the Niners average as a team this year 4.6 yards a carry 4.6 by contrast the chiefs average 4.2 yards a carry right but where you really end up with problems and i mean problems is that the Chiefs, on average, give up 4.9 yards a carry. Right, 4.9. The Niners, by contrast, give up 0.4 yards per carry less than the Chiefs. Right, the Chiefs can't run the ball. 4.2 yards versus 4.6. 
and the Chiefs can't stop the run. In terms of the league, the Niners' yards per attempt gives them a 9 ranking in the league, right? They're ninth. The Chiefs' yards per attempt give them a 20th ranking. Defensively, right? Defensively, neither team is blessed in terms of stopping the run. But the Chiefs' run defense, in terms of the yards per attempt that they allow, ranks 29th in the league. The Niners rank 23rd. Right? So understand, there's a mismatch defensively. The passing games are close. And there's a mismatch in terms of rushing the football. Right? The Niners scored 23 rushing touchdowns this year. That ranks first in the league. Right? The Chiefs only scored 16 rushing touchdowns this year, which ranks 13th in the league. Let me also add to, I want people to look at Raheem Moser. Right? Understanding that Tevin Coleman is going to play in the game. He's listed as questionable. Good luck keeping that warrior out of this game. Right? Understand Raheem Moser, just Google him. For his career, going back to his days in Purdue, he's one of the dominant kickoff return men in the game. I know the storyline on TV is that he kept getting cut. What I want you to do is to look at his Wikipedia entry. Look at his college stats. You're going to find out that many of these teams cut him trying to get him on their practice squad. He was viewed as a special team specialist. In a game like the Super Bowl, if the Niners just have Raheem Moser return punts, return kickoffs, then any difference in the team's special teams is going to disappear. Right? The Niner kicker, Robbie Gold, is one of the best in the National Football League. Simply put, the Niners statistically are the better team. Now, this is football. Turnovers can offset a talent gap. Right? Um, we had a Super Bowl in Miami a few years ago when it rained. Right? It does rain in Miami in January. That could change things quite a bit. But wow, are you sure the Niners aren't going to find a way to keep Pat Mahomes off the field? Are you sure the Niners, given that Kansas City gives up 4.9 yards per attempt running the football, are you sure the Niners aren't going to just have a heavy dosage of running to slow down this game, to keep Pat Mahomes off the field, Right, to make this game look like the game they just had against Aaron Rodgers. I believe there's really only one dynamic duo that the Niners have concerns about in the National Football League. One combination of coach and quarterback. I don't believe that's Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. I believe it's Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. Right now, I can tell you, look at Wilson's numbers. Wilson beat the Niners once this year, literally came within an inch in the second game. 
right? I know the press is hyping Pat Mahomes. Are you sure that Pat Mahomes poses more of a threat to this 49er defense than does someone like Russell Wilson? Let me point out, too, there are many times that Pat Mahomes is running around the pocket hoping that a receiver breaks free. And he's able to outrun defensive linemen and linebackers. Folks, the Niners have one of the fastest defenses in the National Football League. Right? Are you sure that Pat Mahomes is going to be able to run around the pocket and avoid very fast, determined linemen like Nick Bosa, the second pick in last year's draft? Right? Understand, the Niners have been down for a while. So you have very high draft picks. Solomon uh, Thomas is another one. Very high draft picks. Patrolling the 49er defense. Look at the number of sacks that the 49ers had during the season. This is an elite pass rush. This is a fast pass rush. Do you think Mahomes is going to be able to stay alive in the pocket long enough to hit Tyreek Hill 50 yards downfield on broken plays like he has throughout the year? I don't. Right? I don't. Let me also say this about Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, what I'm going to say is controversial. I've watched Garoppolo for a while now. I'm in the Bay Area. And Garoppolo has a very low affect. Right? This is a math guy. In other words, every game for him is just a math exam. I've noticed with guys like this that maybe he has some butterflies at the beginning of the game, but because he's not relying on running around the pocket and outrunning Nick Bosa, then throwing a pass across his body, because he's more of a Every play is the same play. He's going to fade back in the pocket. Then he's going to read a progression. Right? Because he's more of an in-the-pocket quarterback who's just reading the defense. And because he doesn't have a big ego. Right? If the game plan calls for him, to only pass the ball eight times, he's okay with it. If it calls for him to hand off to Raheem Mostert and have Mostert score four touchdowns or whatever it was, he's okay with it. Even when the team is averaging 7.4 yards per attempt. Right, so I know. This is Garoppolo's first Super Bowl. Let's also understand it's Pat Mahomes' first Super Bowl. Right? I don't believe the moment is going to be too big for Jimmy. Let me go one step further. If you look at Jimmy's ball distribution, you're going to find out that this guy repeatedly, fearlessly, throws the ball deep down the middle of the field. Right? This guy doesn't need a receiver to be wide open. This is a guy who will throw the receiver open. I think Garoppolo's underrated. I think this Niner offense is underrated. The Kansas City Chiefs offensively, in terms of yards per play, average 6.2 yards per play. That's a big number. 
The 49ers, offensively, average 6.0 yards per play. You have a better defense, better run game, statistically close passing game, going up against a marginally, marginally better offense. I think the Niners should be favored by at least three points in this game. I would sit the game out, since I have futures bets on both teams, I would sit the game out except for the compelling value I see. You mean the team that should be the favorite is actually getting a point and a half? I like the Niners getting the point and a half. Quite frankly, I expect the Niners to win this game outright. Understand, too. This is not Andy Reid's first Super Bowl as head coach. But this is also not Kyle Shanahan's first Super Bowl. He was the offensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons. Both guys have problems with the clock. Both guys do. I know out here in the Bay Area, people are still upset with the way the Niners lost that first game against the Seahawks this year. Right? Both guys have problems with the clock. But pacing the game is going to be a hell of a lot easier for the 49ers when you have a rushing attack that averages 4.6 yards per attempt. I like the Niners getting the point and a half. I expect them to be the next Super Bowl champion. That's how I see it. I know there are many people out there who disagree with this. Obviously, the betting public disagrees with this. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.